Hello, nerds. Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom music edition for the week of August 27th, 2018. This week in music, we've got new music like usual. We also have the anniversary of a metalcore, what I would consider classic, and some freedom of speech issues that we're gonna get to at the end of this. But before we get to any of that, intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. And first things first for music this week, guys, we have new music from Atreyu. We got two new songs from Atreyu. They announced uh, at the beginning of the week they're putting out a new record. Uh, it's coming out October 12th. It's going to be called In Our Wake. And the two songs that they released subsequently are the title track off of the album, In Our Wake, and then also another song called Anger Left Behind. Uh, you can find the links to them, you can go listen to them, watch the videos, whatever, down in the description. I, I feel like there needs to be something that needs to be addressed here. First, obviously, uh, we've talked about it before because they gave us Long Live just about two years ago, so we might have talked about it on here. I know I've talked about Atreyu a number of times. They are one of my favorite bands. Uh, if you go back to the Eclectica videos, the, and we did the top five bands, our personal top fives, Atreyu was in my personal top five, so uh, they, I, I have a fondness for them, and that's really just the first three label records, so uh, uh, Suicide Notes and Butterfly Kisses, The Curse, and the, a Death Grip on Yesterday, because Lead Cells was after that. So those three records are fantastic records. They are absolutely, if you're wondering what metalcore is, they are perfect examples of the genre. They are not necessarily uh, genre defining. That's more kill switches ground, but they're still. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's a fantastic example. So that being said they kind of veered away from that. They started going a different direction as of approximately Lead Sales Paper Anchor, which was their fourth studio record. Uh, fourth label record, I guess is more appropriate. And they kept off of that course for a while. The Songs for the Damned uh, was... It, it, they, they just kind of turned into this pop metal band, something that was easily digestible on the radio and, and stuff that you could just... that anyone could listen to and easily uh, digest. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, that's just not where they started. So the fan base of their first few records got a little uneasy with that. And then they put out Long Live, just like I said, a couple years back, after they went on hiatus as a band. Uh, their first record back was Long Live, which was very, very much in the vein of The Curse or Death Grip on Yesterday. So it was it was hopeful. There was, there was definitely a sigh of relief from the Atreyu fan base it was like, oh, they're getting back into this sound. This is where they started. This is the sound that everyone seems to like the most. So, yay, good stuff. And the, the, the title track off of that record is one of my favorite Atreyu riffs ever that starts that track off. Just really uh, angular, but still heavy and, 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 and a lot of the bottom end and very, very, very good record. And now we're to In Our Wake, which again comes out October 12th. And the first the first song I listened to of these two was the title track, In Our Wake. And it's not even oh. I will I will say this, they are playing with the formula, because over these few records they have come up with a formula of what an Atreyu song is. And they're challenging that. So that's good, that's growth. I just don't think the challenge is in the direction that m makes sense considering what Long Live was. And it, it, it uh, I'm not a fan. I'm, n I'm not digging it. I'm not digging these two songs. Anger Left Behind, the other track that they released, is a little bit more in the same vein while still challenging that formula. Uh, so if 
Anger Left Behind is more indicative of the rest of the record, which I, I, I hope that is the case, then there is hope for the record. If, however, In Our Wake, which is the title track, so I tend to think that that is the one that's more indicative of the rest of the record, then it's just going to be another Songs for the Damned, and oh not a good showing for the first two tracks i feel like again i could be wrong i maybe my my bias is showing and i and i just really like their heavier stuff again you can check out the links in the description and go listen to these songs for yourself and then come back we can have that conversation but since that hasn't happened yet we're going to move on next on our list is another new song from clutch again from book of bad decisions this one is called in walks barbarella it just this is a this is more again we we got a couple of those earlier tunes it sounded like they were experimenting with their sound as in the production of their sound there was a lot more fuzz on the bass uh there was a lot more processing on the guitar the vocals were pretty much similar so it, it was it was a it was an expansion of the sound uh the last two two tunes this one included are more akin to what you would expect from Clutch, which is still amazing, still great, just not as much of a branching out as I was hope as I was hoping for on this record. Uh, it is not out yet. September seventh is the release date for Book of Bad Decisions, so we don't know what the entire record sounds like. Just these like five songs that they've released so far. Uh, either way, it's definitely going to be worth picking up. So go find a music store somewhere and if one of those exists anywhere near you or uh check it out on itunes or wherever streaming service you use as they release these songs they're releasing uh a, it as part of a playlist that each of the band members is putting together so uh, if you have spotify definitely look it up there and then you can get what jp and what neil and the other guys in the band you can get the songs that kind of not necessarily inspired them for this record, but songs that they like and kind of you can get in their mind space uh, behind their musical creation. Not again, not specifically for this record, but definitely uh, good. It's a good, good playlist. You can, again, look it up on Spotify for each of these songs individually, and this song is In Walks Barbarella. There is a proper music video. You can click the link in the description to go watch that. And then we're moving on. Next up is a band that I was unaware existed. And I feel like I should have been aware, uh, being as their first record came out three years ago, 2015, uh, or I could be wrong, yeah, 2015, and they were signed to Napalm Records, and two of their members are former members of another one of my absolute favorite bands, Mudvayne. Uh, they got Matt McDonough and Chad, no, not Chad, Greg Tribbett. So Greg Tribbett, guitar player, Greg Tribbett from Mudvayne, and Matt McDonough, the drummer from Mudvayne, uh, are in a band together once again called Audiotopsy. Uh, play on Autopsy, and it's kind of a really bad pun, and it's not a very good band, which breaks my heart. Uh, everything, the bands that have come out of the disillusion of Mudvayne have been subpar to mediocre at best we had hell yeah was the first one uh which is mediocre there's really nothing stand out about hell yeah it sounds just like the rest of the schlop that you get on the radio but that was uh chad the vocalist and greg started that band with vinnie paul the drummer from pantera if you don't know who vinnie paul is then listen to some metal man you'll 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 educate yourself uh, and then in 2000, end of 2014, beginning of 2015, somewhere around there, sources had different dates for this, but somewhere in that neighborhood, when they put out whatever record it was that came out in 2014 for Hell Yeah, Greg, le nah, yeah, Greg, Greg left the band. Greg left Hell Yeah and started Audiotopsy with Matt. Uh, just, and then, and then while all of that is happening, we have Ryan Martini, the bass player from Mudvayne, who started, uh, Dim the Glare, and it's an instrumental band, um, with guys that have played with, uh, I can't even remember, jam bands. Effectively, the guitar player and the drummer are both are from jam bands. Um, they've played with other bands, too. 
I, I'm really drawing a blank here because I didn't put it in my notes, so my apologies. But it's a it's also a mediocre to quasi sub mediocre band. Nothing again that's really epic about it. It is very unique. That doesn't sound like anything else. So it's got that going for it. But I don't know how much of a compliment that is when it's still forgettable. Like the music doesn't get cut. There's there's nothing about it that makes you go, oh. I need to listen to that again. It's just a novelty of, oh, I know these guys from these other bands. Let's listen to this thing that they're doing now. And then you forget that it happened. Uh, I, 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 for a long time, couldn't even remember the name of the band. That's how forgettable that band is. So just these post Mudvayne projects that they're in are not cutting it, man. And Audiotopsy is kind of the closest thing that we're going to get to Mudvayne, I feel like, but this even still feels very radio friendly, very non-confrontational, very, I mean, there are some heavier tracks. Uh, the, the record that they're putting out is called The Real Now. They haven't released any actual tracks off there. They just have a teaser for it, but you can go listen to their first record, which is called Natural Causes. Uh, that That's the one that came out on Napalm Records back in 2015. Uh, this one's coming out on Megaforce Records, so even the record label was like, eh, you guys are forgettable, I'm sorry. That, so, as I was listening to the music off of the first record before, while doing the research for this episode, uh, some, the thing that hit me about the sound of their, the, what they're, they seem to be going for is it's like the easy, digestible, radio-friendly bits of Mudvayne got together with the dudes in Filter and had a baby. And that's the sound of Audiotopsy, is Filter meets Mudvayne, meets like later Mudvayne, not even not even end of all things to come Mudvayne, but everything after that Mudvayne. Uh, so it's not bad, but again, we've had that conversation in, in multiple videos before. Just because it's not bad doesn't mean it's therefore good. Uh, just... Listen at your own discretion, I guess. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to some of the to a playlist of uh, some of their stuff off the first record, but it's I can't give it any sort of glowing review. It's ear fodder. That's about as good as it gets. And then we're gonna kick over next to a real quickie little bit in music. We are celebrating this year, apparently, I, I believe this month even, if I remember correctly, uh, the 15 year anniversary for the album Waking the Fallen from Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, the last time they were fantastic, I feel like. Uh, not that their later stuff isn't good, but again, it's, a, it's more of that same. Just because it's not bad doesn't mean it's not good. They, there's the, the stuff that they've put out since Waking the Fallen has gone between very mediocre to kind of good. So somewhere in that neighborhood. But this is Avenged Sevenfold at their finest. Arguably their best record. Came out 15 years ago. Makes me feel really old. Because I remember when they were gearing up. I remember talking to the guys. Met them at... Uh, 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 warp tour and talking to them about the recording process for this record and uh, just if I uh, if you haven't listened to it again there will be a link in the description so that you can go listen to this I'll try and get as official a link as possible so that they get the uh, they get their royalties and such but epic epic record um, after this came back country and then the album with the white cover that I think it was a self-titled and just really really downhill from here so fantastic again this is another prime example of the subgenre in metal called metal core as far as I'm concerned anyway I know that my definitions of subgenres a I don't really care to keep them up with other people's then therefore B are not really the same as other people's so take with that what you will um, but that's all we got to talk about for Avenged Sevenfold. Just, just kind of a, a note. I felt old, so I had to share. Uh, and then our last bit of news is nothing to do with anything heavy. Um, surprisingly, considering the content of this, uh, this is a uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court case just uh, had a ruling in the matter of Jamal Cox, who was arrested in 2014 
So this has been going on for about four years. Uh, in which he calls uh, two police officers by name. This uh, And the video that the, the song comes from was released shortly after he got out of prison on drug charges. Um, and a police officer saw the video and, and that's what brought up the charges. His charges were... Uh, where is it? His charges were witness intimidation and terroristic threats. Uh, based on the lyrics of this song, again, he called out two officers by name and then, uh, from what I could gather, then called uh, an action to violence for anyone listening to him. Uh, that is a violation of... Uh, that, that of your right to freedom of speech that when you call somebody to action call somebody to violence against somebody else that is where freedom of speech ends uh all of the sources that i was getting from this were trying to paint this as and it's entirely possible that i am misunderstanding exactly why he was arrested in this case uh, he could just have said their names and then not have the call to violence but again from what i could gather there was an actual call to violence, in which case you give up your right to freedom of speech because you are then causing harm. That is the line. Like, I, the, the sources that I had on this couldn't figure out why someone like this could do it, could, could, could not say these things in an artistic fashion because that's what he said. That was his rebuttal was, well, it was artistic. It wasn't intended as a threat. Well, if there's a call to violence, it doesn't matter if it's intended as a threat. That's what it is. So then it brings up the question of, well, in, in Eminem's songs where he's talking about killing his wife, what's the, how, how can Eminem get away with that? But this Jamal Knox can't. Well, Eminem wasn't calling for somebody else to kill his wife, A. B, he was, it was a, a, almost like a theater production in one of the songs where he was actually acting it out. Therefore, you could make the artistic defense argument there. Uh, and again, the biggest thing is he wasn't asking for someone to do it. He was saying, I'm doing it. And obviously he wasn't. Therefore, that's how you can draw that line. Uh, just <sighs> the, and, and also the reason I feel like the, uh, sup the Pennsylvania Supreme court ruled against Jamal was because he had specifically had run-ins with these two police officers. I couldn't find if they were the police officers who, uh, initially arrested him on the charges on the drug charges that in 2014 or, or before what, whenever that actually happened or if these were just police officers who he felt was harassing him. Uh, I'm sure they are linked in some way, but it, it was a little vague. There wasn't a whole lot of details that I could get my hands on. But still, that I, I feel like that should be obvious. If you're saying, I'm doing this or I'm going to do this, that's a little bit of a gray area. But if you say, you need to do this now to somebody else, that's a call to violence. Therein lies the difference. Uh, but that is all we have this week for music, guys. I know it's kind of a weird note to end on, but I feel like it's an important thing to... to I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of rap and hip-hop as well as the heavy stuff, and definitely there's a lot, a lot of violence in the heavy stuff that you can get away with because, again, no call to action. But I'm repeating myself and talking in circles. So we're going to end this week's video. Thank you very, very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation with me, then jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can go find all the blog entries, all of the freebies, links to the stores so you can get your nerdy swag. There are three stores up there, including the one that uh, produced this shirt for me. So go check out generallynerdy.net. Support me there or jump over to patreon.com slash generallynerdy. That is where you can support a little more directly. Uh, there's four different tiers that you can show your support. Just a dollar a month is the lowest tier, and that dollar goes a really long way. So go check it out. Generally Nerdy on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Generally Nerdy. If you are new to the channel, then definitely click that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you know when I post videos. The posting 
sometimes is a little erratic, but I'm always at least posting one to two things every week. So keep your eyes peeled and keep that bell rung and make sure it's clicked down to the always and not sometimes because that's a weird thing that YouTube decided to throw in last second. So definitely do that. If you like the episode, click the, the thumbs up button. Let me know that you liked it. If you didn't like the episode, click the thumbs down, whatever. Just give me the feedback and we can have the conversation down in the comments section. If, though, you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go and click boxes and things and stuff, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>